Shalom and welcome to the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. We're looking today at Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 27. You may remember in verse 26 that the Lord uh, said that he has seen among his people wicked men who are lying in wait to entrap others. They're sort of like like hunters lying in a duck blind, trying to take advantage of others through uh, various schemes and injustices. And the Lord's going to continue that imagery a little bit in verse 27. So let's go ahead and read the Hebrew as we get started. Kik luv male of ken batehem mileim mirma al ken gadolu vayashiru. So we start with this little preposition ki meaning that's our que, uh, in this case it's been reduced to a hirak because we would have had two schwas together. So this is like, and then kaluv, this is a noun, pretty rare actually, it's only found here in a couple places in Amos chapter 8. Uh, and in Amos it's translated basket, uh, basket of summer fruit. But here we may want to translate it as cage, and you'll see why, or if we leave it as basket, like like a basket full of birds, which is why we may want to translate this as cage. Uh, now, birds, oaf, um, this is our word bird, uh, but it's a collective word, so we would translate it birds, even though it is in, in the singular. So like a cage full of birds, thus their houses, this is our plural of uh, bait, bait, which means house, but it becomes batim in the in the plural, and then with the here with the uh, obviously with the pronoun suffix, this is a uh, a three mp suffix. So their house, thus their houses are full. This is the plural of this adjective over here because it's referring to houses now, so it's plural. That's why we have the im. It needs to agree. Their houses are full, but full of what? Mirma. And this is a word from, from the, the root rama, which means to be treacherous or to beguile somebody else. So mirma is a noun, actually, which means deceit, treachery, fraud. And that's what their houses are full of, uh, these wicked men. Um, therefore, al Cain, on account of thus, gadulu. So here we have a perfect... This is just going to be a third plural, third common plural, cal from gadal, which means to uh, to become great. But here, probably, especially in parallel uh, with the following verb, you're going to see this is probably referring to uh, becoming great in the sense of wealth, value, and power. And in in an abusive way, these are unjust gains and unjust power, which has been appropriated. They have become powerful or great in that sense, or, or, or weighty. And then... Well, what do we have here? We're going to have an imperfect um, consecutive. So we can see that pretty clearly because we have this perfect and followed by the va here with the, with the dagish uh, in the yod. And we have a yoda beginning and u at the end, so it's going to be a 3MP. But it's pretty clearly a hifiel, isn't it? You know, we see the patak that's under here, although that could be because of the, uh, the guttural as well, but then you see this hirak yod in the middle. So uh, what we have here is a hifiel from the verb ashar, and ashar, which means to, in the cow, which means to be, uh, be rich, and the hifyo has the sense of to gain riches, to acquire riches. So therefore, they have become uh, great or powerful, and they have acquired riches. Why? Well, because their houses are full of deceit, like uh, a basket is full of birds. So that's that's what's inside their house, and it's picking up on this Fowler's image uh, from verse 26, where they've been hunting for this, and now they have stuffed their basket full of the unjust riches of others. Um, and you're going to see that show up in the way different people translate uh, Mirma over here. Well, let's go ahead and hide our work here and look uh, just very briefly at three translations. Uh, first of all, in the Tanakh, uh, translation of uh, Jewish Publication Society, 1985. As a cage is full of birds, so they translated that as, as cage here for Kaluv, so their houses are full of guile. So Mirma here, they translate that as guile. Good translation. Uh, it could be deceit, treachery, fraud. It's, it's what they've been using toward other people. Therefore, uh, so their houses are full of guile. That is why 
for the therefore here, they have grown so wealthy. So they kind of combined these two here and made it grown so wealthy, become great uh, and increased in wealth. So they've brought those two together and grown so wealthy. That's fairly good translation, not uh, extremely precise right in here, but it certainly does give the sense. Um, New Jerusalem Bible. Catholic translation, like a cage full of birds, okay, so are their houses full of loot. Now, I thought this is interesting here because uh, there are other words in Hebrew for loot or what that which has been uh, appropriated from others, whether in war or through through theft. Uh, but here they're translating the, the guile or the, uh, the treachery or the fraud. Uh, they're, they're translating it as the result of the, the, their fraud. Because they've deceived and been treacherous with others, this treachery has given them loot. Uh, that actually is a good parallel because what's, what's ended up in the, in the baskets over here are the birds and what's ended up in their pockets over here is loot. So it's not a good translation, but it does give more the sense of what, what, it's, what it's all about. They have grown rich and powerful, uh, probably reversing these two but uh, we certainly get the idea of it. Rich and powerful flows a little bit better in English, but it's, it's obviously the rich is this one over here uh, from Ashir, and Gadol is powerful. And then one last one over here with the uh, Good News Bible, or the today's English version. Again, much more of a paraphrase, but you see the same sort of idea. Just as a hunter fills a cage with birds, so they've developed the simile out, uh, the comparison a little bit further, drawing back again from verse 26. Uh, as a hunter fills a cage with birds, they have filled their houses with loot. So they've gone with loot uh, for the same reason, even though, again, it's, it's the word uh, guile or treachery. That is why, that explains why, they are powerful and rich. So they've kept the, the word order here probably a little bit closer. But you get the idea in all these cases. The, these people have taken advantage of others in very unjust ways. Uh, and evil ways, and made themselves uh, the, benef the beneficiaries of this unjust gain. And so they've gained both power and riches. Uh, th that does not pass uh, by the Lord's uh, notice. He sees what's going on there, and he will deal with it. Uh, Jeremiah has another verse to add as he continues this, uh, the, this uh, accusation against his people. We'll see that in verse 28 next time. So check back with us for the weekend edition of the Daily Dose of Hebrew. Shalom.